Okay, we are going to sew up the widest pad that I have ever made. I've never made a pattern that required two pages for the wide flare to fit on. So I'm very excited for this to be an option now because it's been requested. Some people were saying that they used a pad, like a disposable pad in the middle. And then as a like a T-shape, they would put a second disposable pad um, in the back. So hopefully this will eliminate the need for that because it will just be... Um, one big pad and more comfortable and convenient and all of that great stuff about cloth pads So this pattern looks really blank because it was just my test print um, It ended up sewing up fine. So the pattern if you get it on Etsy, it's the same Your version will just have more information and labeling on it So I'm placing this onto my flannel as my hidden layer that I sew the core to. You don't have to do this. I just like to do it because then I can trace the outline of the sewing line directly onto the flannel with my marker. Uh, and it's the process is the same every time. The reason why I do this is because sometimes the back of the topper is dark and then you can't see your marker on the back of it. So you have to use like a gel pen or some kind of fancy marker that'll show up on the back of a dark topper and so I just found that irritating so now I just streamline the process I always use white flannel um, and sew the core to the flannel and then that is just hidden behind the topper so I'm using Zorb for my core I based I like sprayed the pattern with a little bit of basting spray so that it would stick to the fabrics and not move around while I was cutting that it doesn't like transfer to the fabrics so it's pretty convenient to do that then you can just use a rotary cutter or scissors if you'd rather use those then i took the core and i lightly spritzed it with some basting spray i centered it in the middle of the sewing line so that i knew it would be uh, pretty much perfectly centered and then i take it over to my sewing machine and sew the core onto the topper but i also ended up cutting out the fabrics even though I'm not sewing them yet, because the core is not attached to the flannel yet, I'm still just tossing it on top of the topper fabric so I can cut it out and be done cutting before I go ahead and attach the core to the flannel. So this uh, topper fabric is Bamboo Sherpa. I got it from Wazoodle a few years ago, so I don't know if the same type is available right now, but it's very soft and... It's very flexible too, so it makes pads that are really floppy, if you're into that. Um, if you like pads that are not as floppy, if you want them to be stiffer so that they don't like kind of fold over, is what I've heard people say, then try bamboo fleece in like a 400 weight GSM. That makes pads that are a little bit stiffer um, if you're using that as a topper. My backing fabric that I used is Wind Pro fleece. I think this particular fabric used to be called um, power stretch 9411 but now they call it wind pro um, so yeah and okay now I'm just gonna use a straight stitch to attach the Zorb core to the flannel I sew pretty close to the edge of the core um, I started off when I was sewing the core directly to the topper I would use a wavy stitch because it would really sew down the edge because I was using bamboo fleece and I just, I don't know, I liked the way it looked as well on the topper. Um, so that's an option if you want a decorative look on the topper. A straight stitch works well too. Um, but it's also nice to have it hidden so that if you have any like stitching imperfections, then you won't see it. Here's my helper. I'm still getting used to having two young cats in the house. And I did not realize it was going to be kind of troublesome to keep them out of my business so yes thank you fruit loop for your cooperation after the core is sewn to the flannel i am going to pin all of these layers together and we're going to call this right sides together so that the uh, the topper the decorative fabric is facing the fuzzy part of the moisture barrier fabric um, I'm using a lot of pins, but I actually wish that I had used more because this pad is so big I had to like fold it over to fit it through the neck area of the sewing machine and The fabric got a little scrunched in the middle and then I wasn't quite sure like where to flatten it back out So I'm marking the section that is going to be my turning hole. So I'm not going to sew that area um, And I think I wish I had left it a little smaller I thought it was going to be more difficult to turn the pad out, but it was just fine um, and that area of the 
large flare worked fine even though it's not completely straight right there so when you're sewing on this sewing line just take it real slow and lift the presser foot turn the whole pad instead of trying to like yank the fabric or manipulate it to go around curves um, at least that's what works for me on my other sewing machine i used to use a walking foot it just worked better on that sewing machine that was a singer um, this is a Bernina, and although it came with a walking foot, I didn't actually prefer it. So, yep, just keep going. When you get to um, points where your stitch length is not quite right, you can shorten the stitch length so that hopefully it'll land right in the point where you want it to be. Um, that's getting a little fussy, but I love sewing pads that um, like have really nice details and the shape looks really even so that's where that's like one of my priorities but if that doesn't bother you at all and you're making them for yourself and you just want to like crank them out quickly then don't feel any pressure from me to like be so obsessed with details the way that i am okay um trimming off the seam allowance with my pinking shears um that's this is why you don't need to have a seam allowance line on the pattern because it doesn't matter you just leave the amount of seam allowance that you want on there and then you trim it off later we're not using that as a guide for sewing make sure you do clip into all the corners so that there won't be any puckering when you turn the pad out okay so i wish that i had sewn the turning hole shut first that is what i usually do but for some reason i'm like oh, i'm just gonna do it different this time so by the time i got all the way back around to the turning hole it was like not in place anymore so i was fussing with it right before i was sewing it shut and it was fine but yeah sew the turning hole shut first um, and if you're sewing a really thick pad with fuzzy fabrics don't sew as close to the edge of the pad because that's it's more difficult to get an even stitch with thicker fabrics so okay fold the wings over find your perfect placement and then use your pokey tool to poke through both wings at the same time. That's how you know you're gonna have the perfect snap settings. I think you could get away with using two snap settings on this pad if you want the snapped width to be a little narrower. Um, you could also like cut the core to be a little narrower. Also a feature on this pattern is that if you print it at 90% from your printer dialog box, it will be um, about 3.5 inches in snapped width. So if you're watching the end of the video now and you're like sewing along, that may not be very helpful, but um, yeah, since the pattern is so long, uh, printing a 90% scale, I don't think you're gonna lose anything um, in order to get that snapped width smaller. Um, yeah, so I have this like massive snap press here. You gotta change out the die parts. I think you have to do that with the hand press as well but there it is cam snaps i always use bronze for everything i uh, feel like it matches just about anything and it keeps things simple when you have lots of colors to choose from sometimes it just gives you decision fatigue so that's my sewing minimalism tip for the day uh, just get one color of snaps that you like mine happens to match the backing fabric that i have so that's nice there it is, measures uh, four inches snapped width, and I think this pad ended up being almost 22 inches long. I'm gonna give it a try the next time I have the opportunity. This sewing pattern is now up in the shop.